This is a lot of people to talk to about boobs, I gotta say. <laughs> I am not a professor. I don't have a team of researchers standing behind me, and I'm certainly no cyber genius. I'm actually just a 20-year-old college student who doesn't own a bra. I borrowed this from a roommate. <laughs> um, I have very public breasts by a lot of people's standards, and this has been a weirdly controversial thing in my life. In the year that I've been going braless, I've encountered this huge, this huge stigma that we have around breasts within our culture. It's shown to me this huge politi political dynamic that we have. I call it politics. <laughs> so these are the most common comments that I've gotten. My roommates were always asking if I was getting cold whenever I nipped out. <laughs> my father, among a lot of other people, asked if I was going to sag. And my mom was really concerned with how professional I looked, even though this was a super... <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Even though I come from this super liberal community, there were still questions to be asked. Was this some kind of rogue hippie phase that I was going through? Maybe I had hit rock bottom and stopped caring about my appearance altogether. Maybe I was just trying to flaunt my sexuality and gain something from it. So I did some research, and I found that in 35 states, it's illegal for a woman to go topless. I got that stat from the Free the Nipple campaign in New York City. On Facebook, <laughs> I found that they restrict some images of female breasts if the nipple is included. And if you think about it, how often do we actually see a public breast? Almost never. They're essentially reserved for sexual or pornographic settings and somehow they become so intertwined with morality and sexuality that they require more censorship than violence and racism. Now, there's this long-standing idea that female chests are inherently different from male, but let me bust some myths for you. Yes, the pun is 100% intended. <laughs> the first one being, men cannot have breasts. This is false, because a man with breast development in our culture has what? We call them man boobs. So this leads me to the man boob double standard. And I've seen men with larger breasts than myself, yet my boobs have never seen the light of day. So if I were to try to go out in public without a shirt on, I would potentially get catcalling, maybe some sexual harassment, or even legal charges for public indecency. So with this idea of breast development in men and development in women, is it really physical boobs that are unfit for the public, or rather identifying as female? My next myth is breasts are sexual anatomy. This is very much not true, because <laughs> to make another human, there are two crucial elements. There's the sperm and the egg, and those things come from genitalia. All of this procreation business happens below the belt, so breasts are not incorporated into genitalia. According to Columbia University, there are categorized as secondary sexual traits, so things that come with the onset of puberty. For females, this includes the widening of hips, um, hair growth, and voice change. For males, there's also the voice change, there's muscle growth, and then facial hair. But these traits aren't universally censored. It's breasts that are specifically targeted. So female chests are just about as sexual as male chests. These are entirely culturally imposed values. We are the ones that eroticize breasts. My last myth is that all women need bras. This is very much not true again, because I am here, I am alive and healthy, <laughs> and uh, there's this long-standing idea, or I've been talking to a lot of male friends, and they think that women have this constant physical need to wear a bra at all times. It's almost like a woman who takes off her bra is going to physically dismantle herself. <laughs> and that's, this is obviously a terribly misguided perception, but it's really not that surprising. I know some women who sleep in their bras. It's like a part of them that never really leaves. And it may seem totally ridiculous to argue that one article of clothing could have such a huge impact, but let's take a look at the anatomy of one of these things and see what they actually do. This is a 36D. It has about an inch and a half of padding, about that much. There's plenty of elastic, and there's metal hooks in the back, and then the underwire right here is essentially the metal reinforcement. These are not designed for comfort. They're here to push up, strap down, standardized in size and shape. 
This is essentially a correctional device. Do all women need to wear them? Absolutely not. I define politics as the strategy in maintaining power. When you take this definition and look at educational institutions and the dress codes that they push onto their students, this dynamic becomes even more clear. There's a high school in my hometown where girls were dress coded for showing bra straps. And then the student body responded by wearing bras on the outside of their clothes. <laughs> and I really wish I could have been a part of that. It was an awesome demonstration. But oftentimes this gets categorized as slut shaming but there is nothing slutty about showing a bra strap or even having boobs to begin with. It sends this message that female-identified bodies... <laughs> yes. <laughs> it sends this message that female-identified bodies are just too inherently sexual for educational institutions. Now, later on in life, this translates up to the workplace. My mom, she works in human resources, so she does a lot of hiring and firing of people. And when I started talking to her about my ideas around breast censorship and boobs in the workplace, she had this really common idea that a woman who isn't wearing a bra in the workplace isn't taking her job seriously. It's unprofessional. And this is a very common idea. You know, if a woman shows a hint of cleavage or even a bra strap in the workplace, her morality comes into question. Her work ethic comes into question. Is she trying to use her body to gain something? This is such a toxic mentality to have towards women in the workplace and just women in general. It pushes them to compensate for the bodies that they are given, to compensate for the inherent sexuality that we are culturally assigned. So how do we begin to learn this? When do we understand the sexuality around breasts? I found in one of our department stores that the average age for these things to be marketed to girls is as young as four years old. So these things are targeted to prepubescent women in our communities. So even before puberty, where male and female chests look anatomically identical, bras are marketed to girls where they internalize the shame of simply being female. We learn that our bodies need support, coverage, and most of all, correction. This is a matter of personal freedom and personal comfort. So what are we saying by pushing our daughters to wear what is essentially a correctional device? What are we saying when we expect our mothers, our sisters, and daughters to wear one of these things to be successful in academics or the workplace? What are we doing by censoring their bodies in every form of media? This is, a part of, this is part of a larger gender bias that we should never stop challenging. We have a tendency to emulate what we see, and we see a lot of media. So by changing these trends in censorship, we can redefine breasts. We can change the way we see women and how women see themselves. This is the politics of breasts. This is politics. Thank you so much.